Well, 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 it looks like enough of you wanted me to bring back the archer challenge video and after way more time than I intended, holy crap, it's been two months, damn. Okay, with that in mind, last time we set out to prove that the bow was a viable weapon in Elden Ring by challenging the 15 remembrance bosses in the game to see if an average player like myself could handle this daunting task. And sadly, I failed not only the challenge, but you guys. As I give you a quick recap of the last video, I'm gonna fix a huge problem from that first video and go ahead and level up at everyone's favorite duck hunt location. So we were defeated by the fire giant after defeating about six of the remembrance bosses, which are the main objective of this challenge. So I asked you in the community on what you'd like to see me change and if you were interested in a part two. And not only have you asked for another video, but you've allowed me to make an addendum to the previous rules. I am now allowed to bring my level up to 150, which will really be a big help as we make our way through the rest of the remembrance bosses in this game. With the six we killed in the previous video, we now have nine bosses left. Are you ready to see if this can be done with the advancement of levels? Well, let's continue and see. We finally hit our new level cap of 150, then we have to fix another big problem that we have in our last run. Do you know what the second biggest problem was in our original video? You've been on YouTube long enough by now. You know what to do. Leave a message below on what it is and we'll get back to this soon. While you answer that, we hunt down some feathers and other arrow crafting materials in order to stock up on what we need for the rest of the challenge. We also grab a few new talismans in order to up the damage output on the build to get it as strong as we can. I think I've given you enough time to figure out our second biggest problem by now. Well, didn't have our weapons maxed out. So I go and pick up a few somber smithing stones of higher quality and max out both my black bow and my Radon's great bow. Now that the easy parts are done, I'm already starting to feel a bit nervous about if I'll be able to beat these remembrance bosses still or not. But so that I don't have an immediate repeat of the end of last video, I decide to hit up all the other remembrance bosses that I can reach before going back to the fire giant. So we start with Ah, look at that. Lich Dragon Fortisax is the first one up. I'll let you know this now, but every time I set up to go into a boss fight, I get this sinking feeling in my chest, being super worried that this boss will lead to the end of the challenge. And even though I've made fun of Fortisax being all spectacle in the past, he is not an exception to the rule one bit. So I take a deep breath and touch the sleeping woman and enter the dream where Fortisax resides. However, I very quickly start a thorough acupuncture routine on the dragon's face and feel like I've got this one in the bag. A few jumps and dodges later and this run is off to a great start as I bag the remembrance of the Lich Dragon. As a heads up to all you watching, while I was filming for the first video, I unlocked all the other remembrance bosses also. So good news everyone! You don't have to watch me get to each boss. So how about you give that like and subscribe button a spin and click those for me so I can continue to bring you more wonderful videos like this one. Well, that could be a problem. I got Moog, Lord of Blood. We are prepped and good to go, so let's use this man's strengths against him. I stupidly equip my blood arrows after both entering the arena and summoning my Mimic Tear. Like an idiot. I hope to myself that this doesn't mess up the fight much, if at all. My patience is quickly worn thin because no matter how many times I hit the damn dodge button this fight, I can't get the timing right and get smashed over and over again with that big triton of his. We enter phase two and even though he gets a couple of good hits in on me, I turn him into a flying porcupine and drop him filled with my own tiny spears in the first attempt. That seemed a bit easy, even with all the setbacks and my lack of timing with the dodges, but we still have some big bads coming up. And even with that, I'm feeling confident at this point. But which ones do you think have the best chance of stopping me? Alright, and there's only three bosses left, mind you, until we have to continue with the storyline. And one of those won't be making an appearance until later due to my, uh, fear of having to face that particular boss with this build. So with that in mind, we get... Mr. Dom the Blasphemous. Due to the gimmick of using the Serpent Hunter Spear that this boss is centered around, I've been fearing this boss more than any of the other lower grade Remembrance bosses since I started this run. When I ran this boss fight with my friend Tim from Mad Dog Gaming, his spells were pretty much useless, so will I really stand a chance with my splinter throwing device? Even though I can't use it, I still pick up the Great Spear. I power up and make my gamble. This time I use Radon's Great Bow, thinking that its rain ability will decimate the God Devouring Serpent. However, due to the speed of this boss, and how the targeting system in this game works, I can't quite get a proper shot off. This first form managed to pick me up like a cheap date over and over again. 
He even managed to easily murder my mimic tier. And before I even got through with phase one of the fight, I lost my first ever life on this try of the challenge run. I decided to say screw it and change back to my normal black bow setup and hope I can take this guy down before he wins with a war of attrition on my arrow supply. The added mobility of my normal build quickly establishes itself as a massive asset as I slowly chunk through his first phase. Upon entering phase two, I still have both myself and my mimic tier, but I'm already halfway through my supply of arrows and I'm over halfway done with my healing supply. Things are getting tough here and the pressure is on. Once he gets to a bit under half health, I both lose my mimic tier and am forced to change some of my arrows. Needless to say, I'm on edge as I use my last health potion and Rikard still has about a fourth of his health bar left. His flaming skulls and slam attack bring me real low when I remember that I have healing in my flask of wondrous physic and quickly chug that down. Out of healing and not wanting to do this again, I gain some distance on Rikard. With a final dodge and arrow shot, I bring him down with a very, very small amount of health left. Letting out a sigh of relief and realizing I haven't breathed in like two minutes for that fight. <sighs> After Rikard, I really deserve a break. But guess who can't get one? It's time for a rematch of a century as I set myself to square off against the ender of my last run, Mr. Fire Giant himself. And to tell you the truth, all that training may have paid off. In fact, there were only a couple times while fighting him that I was even remotely worried. I mean, he had me down to less than half of my crimson tear flasks before we entered phase two. That didn't stop me from pretty much just shredding through this boss this time. I felt kind of bad for how easy it was. I didn't even use half my arrows to beat him. But from here on out, we have the hardest remembrance bosses left. These include Malakath, Lacidisex, Godfrey, Radagon, Elden Beast, or Radabeast for short, and Lady Melania herself. My anxiety is through the roof as I light the flames to burn the earth tree and make my way through Faramazul towards two of these hard bosses. So that means next up is Malakath. With how fast phase 2 Malakath is, I've been dreading this boss almost as much as I feared fighting Rikard. I power up, say a prayer, and enter the arena. I forgot one important thing though, in new game, the Hound of Death here doesn't have that much health. So I enter phase 2 of combat with most of my flasks of Crimson Tears left on my person. Phase 2, he becomes a gymnast and I worry that Black Blade will mess me up if I'm not careful. So I decide to try to keep my distance as best I can. As the fight goes on, I feel my Mimic Tear is keeping the aggro off me exceptionally well. But even with his help, I take more than a few Black Blades to the face before I get one big blood proc and like that, Malakath is dead and I'm onto the Ashen Capital. Now with only four Remembrance bosses left, I'm feeling like I've got this in the bag. Though two of the hardest bosses still remain, still I've had bad feelings about the others and I've finished them in one or two attempts. Now we find ourselves outside of the throne room. Balcony? Place that we once fought Margaret the Fell Omen King. And now the original Elden Lord Godfrey himself is holding his dying son, saying his farewells before he decides to engage us in combat. Oddly for how powerful he is, I just haven't been fearing this confrontation very much. With either Godfrey or his alter ego Nacho Libre, whoops I mean Horalu, my build is just too agile for the much slower moving Elden Lord. Between the Mimic Tear and Nefeli Lu and myself, we beat down the first phase of this fight with only taking two hits. But again, I'm so unfazed by his boss fight that I take my time to reapply my buffs before I put down Merica's first lover. We are now down to only three Remembrance bosses left in the game, Placidisex, Melania, and Radabeast. Personally, the last two can kiss my backside. I'm not looking forward to either of them much, so I decide to do this from easiest to hardest in my own opinion and start with Placidus X. So it's back to Farrah Mazul real quick to slay the ancient Elden Lord. By the way, thanks for watching this long, if you've made it this far. So, like Malakath with his ability to move around so much, I had been fearing the big bad double-headed dragon due to his ability to just fly off in his giant lasers. However, I've been studying his weaknesses and I decide it's the perfect chance to give Radon's bow another chance. One of his abilities I've seen him use has one shot many people I've helped get this trophy in the past. He hits me with it and drops my health to about half, but after using only 15 shots and almost all my healing items, I managed to take the big dragon down in just a single attempt. Obviously I have nothing to worry about, I think to myself, as I head back to the Elden Throne to take on Radagon and the Elden Beast. Yes, I think Melania is harder. If you don't agree with me, argue with me in the comments section. 
I'll see you there. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, let's see what Red Leader has to say about 1,000 arrows penetrating him. Knowing that Scarlet Rot can work against Radagon, I make as many of the Rot arrows that I can, power up, and make my way into his chamber, with what I believe is my best chance of getting through this brick shithouse. Considering the man is made of rock, it's not big duh that my arrows seem to just tickle him more than actually hurt him. But that is why I brought my status effect arrows to try to nickel and dime his health down. However, I soon find myself on a massive back foot as he chases me all around the arena, then smashes me into the ground ending one of my lives. So I make my second attempt. This time I duck and weave through his attacks a lot better than before and manage not only to poison him, but also defeat him getting me to the second stage of the fight and the Elden Beast. I switch out my bow to Radagon's bow and start to make it rain on the fool of an emissary to the outer will. After getting him down to about half health, he begins spamming his holy abilities and before I know it, I can't see the screen in order to dodge his attacks and I'm defeated once more. Two lives down and I'm feeling a familiar chill down my back as flashbacks to the fire giant hit. But I re-enter the arena anyway and try my best to wood peg Radagon. But he don't even humor me this time and pretty much two pieces me. And on my fourth life, well, I don't even drop his health to a fourth before he takes the final heart off the board, which sucks. But hey, it's to be expected. However, considering I only have one Remembrance boss left, I say, screw it. I still have to at least try Melania. So I go to pay her a visit. Well, paying her a visit wasn't really a great idea, as even with bleed arrows, I did little more than tickle her. Not being able to do enough damage to offset her healing, she quickly also takes out the lives allotted to her. So... Is it over? Well, for those of you who like this video for the challenge, yes. I had pretty much given up on this run at this time. But for those of you who have fallen madly in love with my personality, a fellow YouTuber and also a friend of mine by the names of Cream of the Crop and Noah talked me into just beating them with the help of others. Online, if I must, there's no reason to do a part three for just two bosses. With this in mind, we decide that as long as I use the bow, then it still counts as a finish for the run. And I move on to the Blade of Mikola. With Melania, we decide after a quick loss to bring a third with us. So with Blood Arrows and Frost Arrows equipped, we summon an enthusiastic heavy armor user, power up and make our way into the arena. At a third of her health, she takes Cream down. However, me and the random player keep beating on her, with me building bleed and the random player smacking her with his halberd until in a sudden thrust in a 180 degree spin, I'm impaled and unalive, which forces us into a third attempt. This time we summon a man named Human, who is using her weapon against her, but not using it to its fullest. A quick waterfall dance takes Cream down again, and shortly after another one takes me out, leading us into a very frustrated fourth attempt. And this, this is where our fortune changes. We summon a dual wielder named Eden, who I think, okay, well, he has two katanas. Let's see if he can use them. And then I am immediately surprised when he whips out a glint blade phalanx. And thanks to a very well-placed glitch ledge, we end up beating her first phase. She then goes into her Scarlet Aeonia as the second phase begins, and due to all the free damage we get at the beginning of her second phase, this becomes a lot easier than we thought it would be, as between the three of us, we absolutely shred through her health. And like that, I have all the remembrances. Even though I failed the main challenge, we did manage to, with the help of others of course, take the last two bosses out with nothing but a bow. I'd say for an average gamer like myself that this challenge might be on the very difficult level. I don't think it's impossible, even though I failed to do the challenge, any of you that are interested in this challenge should try it. It was really fun, even though the last two bosses were able to thrash me, and it allows you to learn more about the game than you think that just average combat would be able to teach you. If you like challenge videos, make sure to check out this video where I create an impossible challenge to see if the pros of Elden Ring would be willing to try it. With that being said, I can't wait to see you in the next video, fellow Tarnished, and remember to have a wonderful day.